Hi, my name is Roger Casada. And I'm Stephanie Simons. And, and this, this is Chat North Hudson. So on today's episode, we're going to discuss a problem that's often overlooked here in Hudson County. It's the problem of stray cats. Well, they're not really stray cats, though. Oh, really? They're feral cats. Oh, that's right. You know, I've often heard everybody usually call them stray cats, but yep. they're not really stray cats, right? Nope. So I found out that there actually is a difference between stray cats and feral cats. Feral cats are cats that have not had any socialization or domestication with humans. So, hmm. Stray cats, feral cats, two different things. But regardless if we call them stray or feral, there's definitely a cat problem. But I think a lot of people often just see cats and they're like, yeah, they're just street cats and they, they overlook it. They don't really think about it as being a problem. They just think, well, there's always gonna be cats. It's an urban neighborhood. They just think of cats like they think of squirrels or they think of right. raccoons, right? Or they belong. They must belong to someone. Or they must belong so to someone. So a cat must always belong to someone or something that I also learned that you're totally right. People sometimes associate cats with being like wildlife, like mm -hmm. squirrels, like skunks, like anything else that we see around the park. And so they think, oh, you know, that's, that's normal. Right. But it isn't. We kind of decided to talk about this because neighbors started talking about this issue in general. We've observed so mm -hmm. many cats in general. So we did a little research on this stuff and it's very surprising how different cities treat the issue of stray cats. Actually, one of our biggest complaints in, uh, that come into our towns is the howling, the crying, uh, something called caterwauling, mm. which is the sounds that cats make when they're... <laughs> yes, exactly. You've heard that before in your yes. backyard. <laughs> and, Super annoying. Right. And, and, and it's also the destruction and the desecration and their cat poop and pee. So yeah, all but the it's sounds... also they're fighting. They're constantly fighting. Sometimes they're sleeping and you just hear them like... <sighs> Like right. they're fighting and they're caterwauling and they're doing all this crazy stuff. That is mortal combat. Everything we just mentioned stems from the fact that these cats are feral, which means they are not vaccinated, mm -hmm. they're not neutered, they are left to their natural instincts, which is marking territory, procreating, hunting, seeking shelter, and fighting, so on. Fighting. They're going to be fighting. You're going to be fighting. You're going to be fighting. Crazy fights outside your house every single night. Yes. Getting into trash cans to find food, like I said, the hunting aspect. It's their natural instinct as, you know, undomesticated cats. Right, and so you heard about the procre procreation problem, but it's an even bigger problem when you really start to think about how quickly they can procreate. I mean, you basically have 1,000 cats per every 10,000 people right now, and that can continue yeah. to grow over time. Uh, consider this, that New North Bergen here in New Jersey, we have 65, around 65, 66,000 people. Can you imagine how many cats that is and how that will continue to grow over time? So remember, these cats are not spayed or neutered, and they are not necessarily wild, but they are in the wild. So they're going to procreate. In fact, in a seven-year span, an unaltered male and female seven years, will produce 372,092 cats. Wow, how yeah. do you remember that? That's amazing. I know, it's a pretty crazy number. But that's how that problem, it, it's, a, it's the problem, and it's getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, it's not even just the overpopulation of the cats that's a problem. The overlooked problem is the problem of disease. I mean, we know yeah. that these cats carry uh, terrible contagious diseases like uh, rabies, uh, and that can be transmitted to your children, that can be transmitted to your dogs, um, when they're playing in the yard. And the problem is that, you know, a lot of this disease goes, it, it's carried in their poop and ugh, it's disgusting. So it's not just them potentially scratching you or biting. It also, like you said, is their poop. So if a dog eats that poop or if a child makes, has contact with that, that's how disease is not just a cat to cat thing. A mm -hmm. cat can be other animals as well as cat to human contact. So it is a risk for humans and animals when cats are not vaccinated. Wow, geez, so when you really think about it, the problem does sound pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, it's no wonder you have so many people calling into the town to complain about this issue and you start to hear about it a lot on social media. I know that myself personally on Nextdoor, which is a social media app for you know your neighborhoods, uh, I've been hearing more and more people talk about this. Yes. So what do you think are I'll some work. of the possible solutions? So right now, actually, what cities have, like our city of North Bergen, is something called a ban on feeding, feeding bans, right? That doesn't necessarily serve as a solution, but it is what cities like North Bergen, West New York, and a few others have mm. going on. However, however, what other cities have implemented is a program called the TNR program. 
Hmm. What's a TNR program? I feel like I've heard this before. Yes, yeah, so TNR stands for trap, neuter, and return, not release. Ah, you know what? Now that I think of it, I do have some friends that are really into this, and I always thought it was release. Why can't you just say release? So as a person who's learning about cats too, cats have a thing about getting into colonies. So when you trap and neuter a cat, you can't just release it wherever. It's going mm -hmm. to come back to where its colony was because that's where it had food and shelter. So that could be an issue if you release mm -hmm. a cat into anywhere and then it potentially gets run over or mm. its kittens get run over or things like that, you know? Right, I get it. You know what, that's really super interesting. It really makes me think, uh, this is a common sense thing. We should have this in Hudson County. It makes yeah. total sense. Yeah, yes. So actually, I found out that there are other cities that have these programs that are in Hudson County, right? Cities mm -hmm. or towns in Hudson County that are doing it through other counties like Bergen County. Hmm. East Newark, Harrison, Secaucus, are all do, running TNR programs through and Bergen and Kearney. Thank yeah, you. That's right. Running it through Bergen County and Bayonne actually is in the process of getting a grant for this program. And we also found that Union City uh, runs their own TNR programs themselves. The problem is that it's it's although it's really great for them and it's been working fantastic. Uh, the, you know because we're such neighboring towns like it's really difficult to distinguish sometimes when you're around Hudson County when you're whether you're in Union City, West New York, or North Bergen, once that cat crosses the street into a different town, it's no longer part of Union City's territory. Right. It makes it really hard for them to manage those cats because the cat colonies don't know the borders. Cats don't know borders, exactly. exactly. They don't know what city they're in. So exactly. the coordinators are kind of put into a position where it's like, well, technically that cat's in North Bergen, so we can't get over there. Right, so you can see why managing these programs town by town doesn't make uh, as much sense as if they were more county-wide. County-wide, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. So who's in charge of these programs? I always heard that um, people say that, oh yeah, it's animal control. Animal control will just pick up the cats and take them to a shelter. And so basically a lot of people think that this problem is under wraps. Is that true? Actually, no. Our shelters are to capacity, which means that they have to kill some of these cats to mm -hmm. make room for other cats coming in, which does not seem like a very nice environment, if you ask me. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, the thing that people don't know is that euthanizing, which is the humane way that we kill cats, is actually quite expensive. Yeah. It can cost $100 to $150 per cat to euthanize versus you know a TNR program, which would cost $55 to $80 to vaccinate. They do something called ear tipping, which is where they cut the tip of their ear off, and they also spay and neuter uh, you know, male and female cats to make sure that they don't procreate. Yes. And so uh, this ear tipping that I just mentioned, it's, it's just to help uh, TNR programs, which are usually run by volunteers, uh, to identify those cats and make sure that, okay, that cat's already been taken care of. So obviously a program like a TNR program makes economic sense for the taxpayer and a city, right? Um, we save money. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I also think it's a topic that makes common sense. It takes care of noise complaints, mm -hmm. it takes care of the marking of territory that cats have a tendency to do and procreation and things of that sort. So this seems like something that is economically right. safe and common sense safe right. for cities and the animals. Yeah, we start stop some of the aggressive behavior that comes with, you know, a not having a cat that's not spayed or neutered. Uh, the fighting yes. that happens, the destroying of your trash, maybe that might happen here and there, but it's really the aggressive behavior of cats uh, by and large will go away when they're taken care of with a TNR program. And we found out through our friend, Lenny Twist, that when he implemented that program in the town of Kearney, mm -hmm. the cat calls that they were getting, well, the cat complaint calls that they were getting in weekly was 25 to 30. After their program was implemented, it turned to a two to three phone call per week on yeah. cat complaints. I have the article right here. Yes. See, it even says it right there. Fewer straight cats around town as Kearney's TNR program passes in the first six first months. First six months. Mm -hmm. So the results successful. can happen very quickly. Yes. Wow, so when you really think about it, it reduces the cat call complaints to the city, it reduces the shelter population, it reduces the overall costs, and it reduces that um, issue with disease, right? Which you think is a pretty big issue. 
So it seems like it's just positive, positive, positive. It, it seems like t just perfect common sense. Why aren't we doing this, Stephanie? Why well, isn't Hudson County implementing this? Well, unfortunately, Hudson County has a little bit of a don't ask, don't tell kind of mm. mentality with, with many things, one. you know, and especially with this cat problem. Some of our local government administrators don't see this as a problem and therefore there's not any attention being brought to it, right? So mm. that first off is the number one problem. People in our administration sometimes consider cats wildlife, that that's just the way that they live. Cats are not wildlife like squirrels and skunks and possums. They're an entirely separate category. So that in itself is a problem. So unfortunately the people in charge of how our tax money is spent they have a very outdated mentality when it comes to this problem. They think, well, you know, we have animal control, animal control picks up the cats, we kill the cats, we then discard the bodies and it's fine, the problem is, is done. But it's really not that easy because as we mentioned earlier, uh, euthanizing cats can cost up to $100, maybe even more than $100. And then mm -hmm. we have to discard the body, there's diseases and honestly, uh, it's really not the most efficient way to, to take care of this problem. Let's not even get into the fact that it's very inhumane. Yes. And in the end, that is not solving the problem, which is their vast procreation, so the vast numbers, mm -hmm. disease, mm -hmm. and nuisance behavior. So it's not a solution. Right. Really isn't. Nope. Stephanie, you know, I think our viewers are getting really anxious by now, thinking, damn, you know, this is a big problem. What can we do about it? What is some of the solutions that we can come up with? So first, it's being aware of the problem itself, which is what we're doing today by having this talk, talk show, whatever we call this. And second, it's being vocal on the topic and asking, demanding that our administration actually does something like implement a TNR program mm -hmm. in our county, not just in certain cities. Mm. But Stephanie, I think a lot of people will be thinking, wouldn't that be really expensive? Do we really want our taxes to go up at even higher? Is it really? So, as we discussed earlier, what our county is currently doing is not working. And it's so much more expensive. TNR programs are, by design, all trained and a volunteer force. So anyone who's interested in becoming a cat caregiver, as they're called, can take these workshops. So if you are interested in it, if anyone you know is interested in it, please reach out to us. We have links and people to get you into this TNR workshop. That's right, Steph. And some other things that we can do is we can write to our town, we yes. can call our elected officials, we can put some pressure on them to really start asking the right questions. Like, why don't we have this program in place? Go to the town hall meetings, go up and speak. Um, tell all your friends on social media, tell your family on social media, get the word out because I think part of the problem here that we addressed earlier is the lack of awareness. We'd also like to give a special thank you to Carney resident and friend Lenny Twist who was the man who got 13 cities to get under the TNR program and he is still working with different cities to get this mobilized and like we said bringing awareness and being vocal about it is the key so thank you to our friend Lenny. Ultimately, we want to become more of a humane society. We want to coexist with our furry little friends. So thanks for joining us on this really important topic here in Hudson County that we know affects so many of you. Uh, so don't forget, subscribe and comment, follow, let us know how you feel. And if there's anything that we can share with you in terms of resources, we'll be happy to share with you. Until next time, this is Chat North Hudson. Hudson.